Hey there, good morning. I did the mute thing again. It is May 31st, 2018. My name is Jeff Fritz. Welcome back. Yes, good morning, Evandro. Good to see you. Welcome back to my live stream. Um, today's the last day of May is for Max. And uh, I'm, I'm wearing my Velcro hat I got from Build, but this time I've got the mobile device patch on it. I figured I'd kind of salute some of our Xamarin friends out there. So the last day of May is for Max. We're going to go back to, we're going to go back to working on a PC and Windows, um, starting with our next show. Yes, June, June is for, June is not for Zune, Ryan, I tell you, look at that. June is for Zune. What is that supposed to be? I tell you. Uh, let's start up some music in the background here, some groovy music. Um, let's see, today I will play, I will play Yellow. So this is music to code by from our friend Carl Franklin. Of course, engineered to get you in the groove, get you thinking and, uh, and focused a little bit better as you're writing code. So it's music to code by. If you want more information about music, music to code by, check out mtcb.pwop.com. Of course, you can ask the chat bot about it, and he'll give you a link out to the website for that. So thank you very much to our friend Carl Franklin for granting us permission to play that music here. By the way, it was a happy month with Max without problems. That's right. No problems. We had a, a slight break in there for for uh, Build, for the Build conference. I think we had a good time at Build. But all Mac, all month, no problem. No problem. Piece of cake. So I'm, I'm really happy that uh, since our last, our last time together, I see a lot of pull requests, a lot of pull requests out there for, um, for our projects, particularly for CoreWiki. Um, so I'm, I'm thrilled with, with your participation in, in our projects, in our community. Um, of course, you'll see me also hanging out on our Discord channel if you want to go check out and talk to some of our friends uh, from here on the stream, you know, while we're offline, while we're not broadcasting. I encourage you to check that out. There's a link to the Discord on the Twitch wall, and there's also a Discord command you can ask. Uh, you can ask the bot of a exclamation point discord and it'll give you a link to the discord channel the discord server um, so I encourage you to check that out if you want to hang out with some of our friends in the chat room 
between broadcasts. Hey there, Duel. Good to see you. Um, so, what's our next promotion? What's the next thing that we're going to do here? May is for Max. This was fun. What are we going to do next? I'm going to... I'm going to defer to an, to the name that, that our friend Saduki gave. We're going to start F-Sharp Fridays. And I think we're going to start it tomorrow. F-Sharp Fridays starting tomorrow. And full disclosure, I know nothing about F-Sharp. So we're going to learn F-Sharp together. Um, w. DeMars. Thank you so much for that subscription. I really appreciate that. I, I hope you enjoy your subscription. Um, of course, we'll match that and make it into a charitable donation to our friends at Girl Develop It. Um, and we should be making that donation any day now. So thank you so much for the subscription. I hope you enjoy the emotes. Um, you'll get the C-Sharp bot emote you can use right there. But we're going to... Yeah, I, I'm, I like that our... Our pair programmers in the chat room there think it's a good idea. I don't have a specific project. Oh, uh, Q, Q not you are. I don't help me pronounce that. Thank you so much for that subscription. I'll match that one as well, and we'll we'll help out our folks at Girl Develop It. Um, it's going to be interesting, absolutely, Joe Bun. I don't have a specific project lined up. I think we might be able to weave it into one of our existing projects. But I'm going to go through some of the tutorials that are online, and hopefully we'll learn some of these projects together. Some of my friends, some of my co-workers at, at Microsoft who, not only do they know a thing or two, some of them are the current people managing the language, and I've, I'm, I think I might be able to get the guy who invented the language to join us for a little bit and talk about F-sharp here on the stream. So that I, I think that'll be fun. Anything but JavaScript tune. <laughs> well played, Welsh Ronaldo. Well played. <laughs> Anything but JavaScript. All right. Yeah. You got me there. All right. Where's... Here. Uh, where did my where'd my sound effects go? Uh, there you go. Well, there you go. Thank you, Welsh Ronaldo. Um, so we're going to have some fun learning some F-sharp together. And... Um, it, it may leak into some of our other uh, some of our other shows. We may do some F sharp over there instead of just C sharp and web development. But we're going to start off with learning F sharp on Fridays. So I hope you guys tune in. You enjoy that. And um, if you have folks that you work with that want to learn F sharp also, follow along. Tune in. Watch the videos when they get posted over to YouTube. And uh, let's have fun together. 90% of developer streams are about JavaScript. Yes. Agreed. And my, my friend No Opcat, that's Suze Hinton, does an amazing job not just talking about JavaScript web development, but IoT development, right? Building building things like, where'd my Razor, my Raspberry Pi go? Razor Pi. It's not Razor Pi. That's a terrible thing. I have a Raspberry Pi around here. I don't see it. But Things like the Raspberry Pi, being able to program and load that up. Arduino devices, right? Even even things as simple as the JewelBot, right? Being able to program that, but folks are building that, programming it with JavaScript. That's great. We want to do something different. We want to break outside the box. Do .NET development. So, so we'll start with some F-sharp learning tomorrow. Hey, Brendan, good to see you. Um, so let's head over to... GitHub and start talking about some of the things going on with our projects here. So here we are back on the Macintosh. Last day on the Mac. Last full day on the Mac here. And uh, here we are inside of Stream Tools. Um, and uh, I have one pull request out here and I, I want to do a little bit more working. I want to do some focused working in Stream Tools today. So I'm going to come back to this from Patrick in just a little bit. Tegaron says, Hope this will push me to finally look into F-sharp. Wanted to do it for a while now, but always was too lazy in the end. A Amen, Tegaron. You know what? I've had on on my list of, of uh, 
learnings that I've wanted to spend time with for at least the past year that I wanted to spend time with F Sharp, really getting in and learning a little bit more about it, feeling, you know, what that ecosystem is like. And um, one thing or another has come up and it's it's pulled me away from that. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of forcing the issue here and saying, all right, we're going to do this on Fridays. So I want to come back to stream tools here. You know, this looks like a, a project management thing. What I want to spend time on, we've got six pull requests that came in in the last two days for, um, or updated in the last two days for our core wiki project. And uh, I want to make sure that, that we review these. Lamp Smash, thanks for the follow. Um, I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. And uh, Steve, hope you're hope you're ready to be get a little bit sweatier here today. You're going to be busy, all right. So don't don't uh, don't wander too far off, Steve. Okay, all right. Um, so it it looks like we've got we've actually got two folks that are working on the same issue here. Smab is up here and implemented identity and HTTPS, and um, Oh, thanks for the subscription, Brendan. I appreciate that. And for the fourth month, uh, we'll make sure that we match that and get another donation over to our friends at Girl Develop It. That's awesome. Thank you so much. As a tier one sub, that's great. I know. We we didn't get that merge into dev. Panda can EPF. Thank you for the... Uh, Thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Um, let's we'll uh, we'll do some merging there and see if we can get see if we can get our dev branch updated and update the scoreboard there, Joe Bond. You know you're going to pop up to the top on that one. Um, all right. Yep, there's our C sharp bot. So, and I am I am working on I'm I'm trying to figure out some additional. Uh, subscriber benefits if if you do want to contribute at a higher level um, got to think about that I'm not quite sure yet so what I'm running into here with core wiki is um, this this one from smab is implementing identity but when I look down here at what summer's been kind of struggling with um, did, did this tremendous bit of work here to start getting security involved but got clobbered by by some of the rebase um, and, and I feel terrible but um, I think I, I'm going to need to decline this because I think SMAB is, has brought it in a little bit more cleanly now that ASP.NET 2.1 is here and we can look at this even added a standard privacy page replace glyph icons with font awesome icons so I think we're going to take what SMAB has brought in here but I think and I, I do see your message there uh, Avandro PR fix for edit save is very important um, that is here and there's also I like this one that you've gone and done the update to ASP.NET Core 2.1 so let's let's make sure we talk about that one briefly. Um, our friends on the .NET team have released the, the final release of ASP.NET Core 2.1 is now available. We've been working with the preview releases, some of the RTM, some of the release candidate releases. We even we even grabbed a nightly build that was the RTM candidate and tried that out. But we've we're full on into. 2.1 is available now, and this is the one that's going to receive long-term support. Microsoft is committing to give a, a three years support on this. So let's update and use some of these cool new features, um, including some of the new performance features for building our application. It'll build significantly faster. Um, and this one here is the one that we should all be kind of concerned about and we should be keeping an eye on is the old the old European GDPR um, thank you for the host dev chatter I don't know why the alarm didn't pop up on that 
Or did I just miss it? Hmm. Um, but we need to make sure that we provide for GDPR information, that kind of thing. And ASP.NET Core 2.1 has features built into it that allow you to manage that a little bit easier. Auto hosts have a separate alert. Um, in Streamlabs, I thought I had it turned on. I, I was getting the auto host notification for you over the past... Yeah, for the, for a while now. Anyways, um, so I want to start with this one. Let's update the project references, and then we can layer some of these other ones on top of it. Um, I like I like the thinking and and the initiative here from Pete to put the article not found pages into mix, into the mix. Yeah, no biggie. So um, let's merge this one. And then we'll take a look at the article not found, and then we'll apply this fix for edit save. And then this is neat search functionality from Pete. Um, and I, you know what? I'm, uh, I think I'm just going to turn this one down and say, you know what? I've I've got another pull request that does this. You know, I'm sorry, Summer, but uh, um, but another pull request that delivers this um, more cleanly has been received and I'm going to take that PR. Thanks for your interest. Let's work on more code together. Um, so I, I missed a follow there from Snile K10. Thanks for thanks for the follow, Snile. Look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Um, hello, M uh, NM. Uh, I'm gonna mess this one up. My merge also has the same changes as the DevOps project references. All right, let's uh, let's go through let's go through these one by one. Oh, the uh, ASP.NET Core it has this also. That's okay. We should should not see too bad a merge. But I'm going to start with with Avandro's merge here because this one this one looks pretty easy because he's just changing a couple of these references and getting rid of the entity framework core reference down here. Um, so that works for me. That one looks pretty good. Uh, back over here to conversation. So let's merge this one. Confirm, and that's going to get merged into dev. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Uh, thanks for fixing these references. I appreciate the help. All right. <clears throat> and uh, let's open Visual Studio Code. And this is the wrong project. We'll go back over to Core Wiki. All right. Uh, let's see what branch we're on. We are on dev. Let's do a git pull. And if we do a .NET build, this should still build properly. Restore completed. Good. Um, now, here's the other thing, right? I can get rid of the RTM configuration over here in package sources. I don't need this anymore. So for right now, I will comment that out. I did a command key C to comment that. So, hey, aspiring DevOps guru, good to see you. All right, so I've removed my extra NuGet reference there. Let's just make sure that we get the RTM version from NuGet.org. Yep, we're good. Um, and if I just do a quick git status, uh, removed reference to uh, 2.1 RTM NuGet repository. All right, uh, Jens Batard, 
do I, I hope I'm saying that, or Gensbetard. Hello, good to see you. Thanks for joining us here in the chat room. Um, so we're we're updating our projects here to take advantage of the new ASP.NET Core. Did I push? I did. To take advantage of the new ASP.NET Core 2.1 features that are available. So there we go. We have that pull request merged. And uh, I'm going to go through all of the pull requests here, and then we'll update the scoreboard by hand. Um, the next one that I wanted to do was, um, let's do the edit save continues, not working. Um, oh, this is from uh, NM, right? Nemanja. Am I pronouncing that right? Nemanja? Uh, was the first to identify a problem in edit functionality, reported it in the issue 75 is not working, and PR. The issue is still open status, despite despite the C sharp frets have already done it, the merge. This PR tries to solve the problem when editing saving. Yeah, I didn't check into this properly. So on get, if ID is null, return not found. Good idea. Um, check if the slug already exists in the database. Yeah. Article exists, article ID. Return not found. Redirect to the proper homepage. It, uh, yeah. Or to the current page. All right. Hey, I got it right. Cool. Um, so let's... Um, let's download this and make sure that it is working. Because Avandro's got a big change here and says, eh, this is a fix to something that Jeff didn't quite pick up. So let's just make sure... Ah, rats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's give this a shot. And... There we go. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, here we go. And this location. Let's give that page an open. Navigate. I think this is the fix for that. Fantastic. My original PR solved opening edit pages, but didn't really test if we can save. Ah, okay. So I will go to all articles, and I will choose first article. So I'll click edit. This is another article. Here is my edit uh, with the fix from Avandro and let me make sure I spell your name right. Nemanja, there we go. All right, let's give it a shot. Save, and there it is. And, um, it did update my last published date proper, appropriately also. If I go to latest changes, there it is. It's moved up to the top after that test upload that we did as well. That's pretty cool. Um, Zerk BTW. Uh, nice to see you, Zerk. Thanks for joining us. You should make a guide on how to set up your dev environment from a new setup. Help me out with that, Zerk. What what do you what what um what can we do there? What um how can we make that a little bit clearer? Um let's um let's start an issue over here. I'm gonna just um how should you set up your dev environment? Let me create that. And do me a favor, pop over here, put some comments into here as to what you like, what kinds of things you're looking for information about, and we'll uh, we'll come around to that. Put together a nice document for it. Um, but finishing this merge here, this looks good. You know, uh, looks I, I like the the fix. Um, I don't have any further concerns about that. Let's. Um, it was here. So let's merge this. 
And you know what? I'm not even going to do the push-up from down here. It works fine from over here. I will confirm this. Um, thanks for the, the fix. I appreciate your work on this issue. Cool. And this was from over here. Did we close this? Yep. So I'll close that. All right. So long and thanks for all the fish. All right. Take care. Um, I've posted a similar issue under stream tools. Under stream tools. Really? There's an issue over here for... Chatbot needs to be formatted. Document Twitch settings. Write some sort of document describing what to do to get the app to connect to Twitch, what to put into user secrets, where to get the values. Yeah, that's a good one. We should put that. That's, yeah. All right. All right. That Yeah, that's a good one. Um, okay. So I'm going to close this one. So that works. Um, all right. Um, I'm going to come to identity last because I think this one has the most changes. Um, I will... I'm going to cancel that. Let's see here. Um, get checkout dev. Let me clean up my branches. It won't tap complete that, will it? Nuts. There's Wintermute's RSS. You know what? Why am I typing? Ha <laughs> ha! And we'll delete this one. All right. Cool. Get pull. Then we've got the updates. Um, Smap did an awesome job with the identity. You took a peek at the PR over there. Oh, cool. Yeah, we're going to get there. Um, so I want to look at this one from Pete. Page not found and article not found error pages. Um, I've intentionally created two error pages. The first is for the URL is missing an article slug, a non-existing article. This will show the article not found error pages. The other 404 error pages is for more generic 404s, some URL that does not exist. I would be grateful for any feedback. Specifically, changes to the text in the 404 is the article not found view result class a good approach? Well, that sounds interesting. Um, I wonder if um, I wonder if we can somehow catch the not found and redirect that. The not found result. Hmm. Um, apologies for the first two PRs. I was apprehensive about committing a PR to the project and thought a small code tidy, the Boy Scout rule, could be a way to get started. Didn't mean to cause you frustration at the start of your week. No problem, Pete. Not a problem. This this type of approach, just going in and saying, well, I just refactored your usings or I fixed the spacing. It's... That's, uh, it's, it's uncouth. It's, it's, it, it can, it could be considered by some to be rude. Um, all right. So until this moment, I did not know I could create a custom view result and replace the return of not found by it. Thank you for sharing knowledge. I would like to suggest remove the last commit once it treats a problem in edit functionality. The problem in edit merge and this, yep, there's the one we just merged. Just make sure I'm on the right page. Did you mean edit CS? Da, 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 da. Undo only the following change. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So it looks like we're going to have a little bit we're going to need to reconcile here. So let's copy this. Smap says there's a few horrible gotchas such that you need version control to keep clean by rolling back some files. Uh-oh. 
There's six files changed here. We've got the new article not found result that'll return the view name called article not found with a status code of 404. Um, Apocovtac, welcome. Thank you for, for joining us. I appreciate the follow. Um, and this is a new page that says article not found. Check the URL entered is correct. It's possible that an article at this address was deleted. Okay. Um, details, instead of returning not found, returns the new article not found result. Where is article not found result? It's under helpers. Good. Uh, da, 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 scrolling down, scrolling down. Edit. Yep, article not found result instead of not found. A 404 CSHTML that is just a page not found. We may end up updating these. Startup CS. Use status code pages with re-execute HTTP errors. Yep, and that's down here. Good. Okay. I'm... I think I'm pretty good with merging this directly, but I, I just want to be sure. Let's, let's check this out first. Um, command line, copy, and let's give this a shot. Yeah. All right. And let's .NET run and see what we got. Oh, okay. Da, da, da. Here it comes. And... I'm gonna go to that address. I don't know why I closed it. Make sure it loads first, right? All right, so there's my home page. If I go to latest changes, I still get first article. If I click edit, that still works, good. Um, now let's try going somewhere that doesn't exist. Somewhere that doesn't exist. Article not found, nice. And I can go back to the home page, cool. This is a bad URL. Page not found. Terrific. That's all we need. That's simple and easy to get. Estimated read time. I've been a little out of the loop and just noticed that. Yeah. There you go. There's a there was a formula and a little bit of a discussion on on how you calculate estimated read time, right? It's like the number of words and the average number you I I did a split on the number of words in the article and uh, on the spaces so we could, you know, right? We could figure out how many words there were, counted those, and then divided by it's like 270 words per minute the average person reads. And uh, did a math ceiling on that, so we round it up and estimate that it's one minute to read this. Of course, it's not one minute for that short, but simple, easy functionality. Um, and at some point, we're going to end up doing a little bit of UI cleanup here. Yeah, it's it was a simple piece of functionality. I, if you want to steal it, you want to use it, go for it. And I just closed... Rats. I just closed that... Mm, that issue we were looking at that I'm ready now to merge. Um, I went into the wrong one. Where'd it go? Core wiki. Um, pull requests... And it was here, page not found, article not found. So this looks really good. Come on, there we go. Thanks for the contribution. This uh, looks good and makes it easy to um, <laughs> protect our, visit our site visitors from going somewhere they shouldn't. All right. And it said that this address is issue 13. Let's make sure that that's closed. So there's the merge. I will close this. Cool. All right. 
basic search and then identity. So let's do basic search next. PR aims to make a basic search engine available. This is issue number three that can be used as a foundation for more advanced search functionality later on. Okay. Current search functionality is very basic. It does a simple, does a case sense insensitive search on the database to see if either the topic or content contains the query. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Just do a simple like in there, right? Does you know, right? Does the content or the title does it look like this text? And that's that's an easy way to get simple search functionality. If you want to do that type of fuzzy logic search that you see search engines like Google, Bing, or DuckDuckGo use, you need to use a little bit more advanced functionality. But we'll get to that in a future, in a future, um, in a future show. Please note I made a, a small UI tweak. The article row for all articles and the article row for latest changes were slightly different. The latest changes row includes a view count, whereas the all article rows did not. All right, we'll have to see there. Oh, here, in that. Okay. Items still on the to-do list, pagination of search, search results. The links for each article in article row don't work after the move to a partial for some reason. This was due to slugs not being generated. Da, da, da. Okay. Placing an inline search field in the nav bar. Bootstrap isn't playing nice, and it looked bad. Uh, like this. A simple link to the search page. That's fine. Uh, does .NET Core have something like a paged collection? No. No, but you can do a list and page through it. Um, change the title from work in progress to basic search. Added some commits overnight. Look at that. Added pagination. Make search result generic so it can be used with other models like... There we go. Uh, like comments, also change partial rendering to be async. All right. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So I will copy that. Let's go back over to Visual Studio Code. And we'll do this merge. Yep. All right. .NET run and take a look and see how our new search features look. There we go. Back to the wiki and refresh. So there's the search, and I, I see what Pete's talking about. It would be nice to have this search as a text box up here, but let's give it a shot. So if I look at my list of all articles, let's find something to search for here. Um, hmm, I lost my pager as well. Hmm... Um, let's search for Avandro. Let's see if it'll find. And I'll hit enter. And it found it. Okay, good. You know, that's kind of what you expect. Um, and there was a thing about the size of that. Um, let's resize my browser here. So when it flips like that, so search is down here. That's okay. That works. That works for me. So this looks good. I'm uh, <laughs> president. Not sure. That's a that, well done. That's another sound effect that I need to go grab there. Uh, gonna have to pay for that one, I think. Um, so I'm gonna merge this pull request from Pete. This one looks good too. This looks good. Nice and simple search that gets the job done. Oh, wait, I didn't click confirm merge. Ah! There we go. All right. Cool. So I'll go back over to Visual Studio Code. Let's stop this. Get checkout dev, get pull. It is not up to date. All right. Um, <laughs> and um, uh, let's go back to my list of branches and let's remove these old ones now that we've merged for search. 
And we'll do the same thing with the not found pages. That's great. All right. How could one test chatbot commands? I was thinking of picking up top. That's a really good question. And that's something that I want to work on with our friend Brad Wilson, who makes the who's uh, one of the leads on the X unit project. Um, let's talk about that in just a minute. I, I think you should be able to build unit tests in the test project that create a chat, the chat bot directly and mock out the chat service. You should be able to do that. We did a little bit of that with the image descriptor uh, command. So this is merged now. Let's close, I, oh, I didn't want to do that. Uh, C sharp Fritz, core wiki issues. Here we go. And I didn't even want to be in issues. I actually want to be over here in pull requests. Um, how would you test? So if you have uh, if you have Visual Studio, right, you would be able to execute the tests in the test project directly. Now, before I go and merge Smab's changes here, because there's a lot in here, I am going to do, I will force a refresh of the scoreboard. Because I have a feeling that Smab is going to pop right to the top for Core Wiki here. So there's Stream Tools, and then we'll see Core Wiki come right after that. So implement ASP.NET 2.1 identity and HTTPS. And yeah, there's just a couple conflicts here because of some of the new things that I've merged. New avatar picture. You're oh, referring is referring to my avatar picture, Mr. Regs? Um, yeah, that's a that's a caricature that folks at Stir Trek, that's a conference um, actually that our friend Steve Smith and Saduki and Brendan help coordinate and put on in the Columbus, Ohio area. They, for all the speakers one year, they, um, they had them make, uh, uh, these caricatures and that's the one they made for me. They, it originally had brown eyes. I don't know if you can tell, but I don't have brown eyes. I have blue. My wife immediately saw it and said, those are the wrong eye color. And, uh, so we changed we, we changed the color of the eyes there. Lots of family connections here. Uh, Columbus, Columbus, Ohio. Yes. Did you miss the .NET 2.1 final? Yes, we we <laughs> we did it real quick. Boom, done. Right up front. Not much to do. It was it was quick and easy. But actually, Cryptrix, what what Smab has for us here, what Simon has for us, is implementing some of the GDPR features. I see you also cleaned up some of the mistakes that I was making with Bootstrap. I see what you did there. And um, brought in the new identity features here, which is going to get us right, right on the precipice of minimum viable. Minimum. I can do this. I can do this. Okay. Minimum viable product. There we go. Thank you, Shia LaBeouf. You're, you're so encouraging. Okay already. Here we go. Um, and I think we have... There you go. You can see top of the month. Smab is the top all time on CoreWiki, but he's about to blow that out of the water with a bunch of new stuff here. We'll, we'll do the applause after, after we get everybody loaded up here. All right? Here we go. Um, so we're going to have to merge the CS Proj changed a little bit, layout changed, and startup. And you know how much I love merge changes, merge conflicts. All right. And I'm, I'm like clicking the copy button here, like the, like the buttons in an elevator. You know, please make sure you copy properly. Please. Please. All right. And we're going to go over here, and we'll start the merge. And here's my conflicts. All right. Startup, layout. Yeah, I, I get it. Thanks. Startup, layout, and the project file. All right. Let's start with the project file, because I think this one's going to be the least issues here. Actually, I, know, I only really changed the bootstrap and the new identity. None of any of the other core wiki files. Fantastic. I mean... 
from from the conversations that we've had here on stream, you've got your stuff together on on Bootstrap. I defer to to your knowledge on that. You are you got your stuff down on that. Let me tell you. Um, okay, ASP.NET Core app. So you here's the thing: you don't have to explicitly give the version number. It'll pick up whatever the latest version is that matches your .NET Core version. And then Entity Framework SQLite, I'm okay with that, but we do have to drop Entity Framework Tools <clears throat> because it, it's it's part of the feature now. So I'm going to accept the current change on that one. Um, the .NET Tool Reference, we do need to remove that, so I will accept the incoming change. I think we need to remove that one. All right. So I will save that. Next one is... Merge conflict in layout. Let's look at there. And looking at the little indicator over here, you see it, it gives me a little blue indicator to show me where the conflict is. And it's because we've introduced the login partial down here. Um, all right, let's accept the incoming change there. And then you have another partial here for the cookie consent. Uh, okay. All right, we'll get it. And let's take a look at what's changed now in startup. We've got a couple of conflicts here. <clears throat> so, okay. We added a single tin for the clock and the search engine. And... Let's see. And then add routing is down here. All right, we're going to need to we're going to need to do a little bit of work, a little little bit of surgery on this cuz I don't think git merged this. I use VS code for all my conflict resolution now. Hey, that's terrific, president, not sure. Um I'm I'm glad you're enjoying using the tool. Now, th there is a way, which one is it? That you can put this side by side. And I uh where is it? Right, there's a way to view the merge conflict side by side. Um, I don't see it. Bummer. All right, let's um, let's start cutting this by hand. I'm gonna get rid of that one. So, note a time clock for time-based testing, and it's down here as well. And there's add routing. So what I think is going on here, add HTTP context. So these are kind of duplicated, more than kind of, they are. I think that's all I needed, right? Let's fix the tab on that, tab on that, tab on that. I th and I think that's where we want that. Let's look at the next one. Use status pages with re-execute, HTTP errors, use MVC, seed data. And they're kind of, these are kind of hanging out in the middle of nowhere. That feels weird. I fixed up some white space in that file as well. That's the other changes I'm seeing. Okay. Um, I'm going to yank that. And really, the, what's changed here is the introduction of use status pages with re-execute before use MVC. So I'm going to cut that. And let's come down here. It was right before use MVC. We'll punch that in there. And I think that'll do it. Let's give it a shot and make sure I didn't break the application. Because nobody wants to break the application. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see here. All right. All right. Just keeping an eye on things while we're waiting for this to boot. And let's give this a shot. Go back to the front page. I thought it was running. No, it's not running. All right. Failed to authenticate HTTPS connection. Oh boy. 
Fail to authenticate. Yes, yes. All right, so I have a feeling what I've run into here is... You're right. I got to get better about doing that. So .NET run, there's all my info where it's building up the database. Good. And it's now listening on HTTPS localhost 64908. All right, so let's go back over here, and I need to make this. Uh, yep, that's fine. And I'm going to add an exception because this is localhost. So that's fine. For my development, I'll accept that. Because of HSTS, you need to go to an HTTP connection properly. Yeah. Oh, and there's our new cookie use policy. All right. I can click learn more, and it'll go to, and it's it's there kind of behind me. Oh, you can't s There you go. It'll go to the privacy page. So if I click that, use this page to detail your site's privacy policy. Yeah, yeah. Except, okay. So now we're getting a little crowded on the menu bar. And new article is over here. Search still takes me over here. And if I search for Avandro, I still get the article. Good. But I think I lost the pager in that change. You can use a .NET command to add certs. Yes. Yep. So this looks like it's going through properly. If I register, email. Let's see if this works. That's not how you spell my name. Password is password one. All right. Must have at least one digit. Password one two three. Oh, it's not. No, I want to. Password with the zero. All right. Now we need to apply migrations. It was pager in project versions. Ah. Try refreshing the page. I think I shall. Hello, me. All right. And a logout button. And if I try to log in again, that's it. And yes, remember me. All right, terrific. So that works. And if I click on me, I can go into personal data and I get the GDPR. Would you like to download everything we know about you page? Deleting this data. What happens if I click download? It's a JSON file. Yes. Show me what I know about me. There's my ID. There's my username. There's my email. Phone number. Two-factor. That's not bad. All right. So we're, we're good there. And uh, I could click delete. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. But two-factor authentication. Cool. Right? This is all kind of standard. Comes with comes with the uh, comes with ASP.NET identity. So, and there's my profile. I can send a verification email if I have an email thing wired up. I don't just yet. Um, this is this looks good. The only criticism I have is that new article is kind of moved over here, and when I click log out, it doesn't actually log me out and remove this. Um, so let's let's see if we can fix this location here and then merge. No, you know what? Yeah, see, look at this. Mm. I'm going to merge what we have here because I think this is really good. And then um I tell you what, I'll open up a I'll open up a new issue. Because I think, I think this might be a good first-timer issue to fix some of the alignment and to turn the search into a, a full search text box here. Um, because I really want to get back to our Stream Tools project. So I will cancel that. I need to mer I need to resolve the merge conflict. So let's take a look back at Git status. Um, I didn't look at scaffolding README. 
Let's look at that. Um, I'm going to remove this because going forward, I don't need it. Yeah. All right. So uh, where is that? Scaffolding readme. And uh, modified app settings JSON. Let's just take a look at what's happening in there. Just to make sure nothing crazy is going on. Where'd it go? There it is. Um, oh, we need to change this URL now that it's HTTPS. Core wiki identity context. Fin oh, all right, so we've got another SQLite database hanging out there for this. It's in a separate database. That's nice. Um, Hi, Rocket. Take it easy there in my chat room, all right? Um, if I read, read through the commit descriptions, it shows what you've done. Um, that's not the right place. I want to be over here. All right. It's okay. Um, this is a family-friendly uh, stream. Um, so I'm kind of keeping an eye on you because of your handle there, Rocket, all right? Um, make sure it has the latest 2.1 SQLite changes, core wiki identity context and core wiki user, change DB connection string to place the file alongside the main database. There we go, okay. Um, modify startup CS to bring it up to 2.1, EF core migrations, manage nav class, Update layout to include the login and the pri privacy. I didn't notice, is is there a privacy link? There is no way to get back to the privacy link. I'm going to change that. It's just a dumb joke from an Eddie Murphy movie. I understand. I, and please, I'm, I want to make sure that this is a welcoming environment f for, you know, anybody who wants to join us. And... You know, I, there there are some trolls on Twitch. Believe it or not, there are some trolls on the internet. <laughs> so, we're I, I want to be a little protective of our chat room and make sure that folks are there. You know, it's not nothing personal. It's okay. Yes, I am German, but and and I will be in Germany in a few weeks. Um, but I I want to make sure I I keep this a welcoming environment for anybody here. All right. Um, all right, so so this looks pretty good, um, and I yeah we just needed to change that one thing in app settings so we when we generate links we get the appropriate URL coming back for the RSS in particular. So let's go ahead and commit. Uh, right. Um, Merged and uh, merged and fixed. Mm, merged and fixed. Uh, uh, what did we fix? HTTPS reference in RSS. Yeah, I think that works. All right, get right. Everything's clean now. Good. We will get push. Um, oh no, I don't want to push. Ooh. I don't want to push back to there. I've resolved this. Now I want to actually check out and merge here locally. So I will copy that. I'm um, C17. I'm going to Nuremberg. Um, I'm speaking at Developer Week Germany. And this should show that I merged this, right? Come on. I th did it only do the merge? It didn't push. There we go. 
And we should see that updated over here. Cool. This is a uh, great add to the project. Thanks for putting it, putting um, identity and security into our project. All right, that's great. The biggest gotcha is that scaffolding the UI overwrites the whole bunch of dub dub root, including site JS. Ugh. Yeah, that's going to be important for our next couple of PRs that we do here. So I'm going to, real quick, before I write up those couple of things that we want to do here with this, I'm going to refresh the scoreboard up top. Um, but let's just create how to avoid multiple clicks when sending a new comment. Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Ability to create links to another page and then create that. Yes, this is the same as wiki text. So I'm going to link that 79 and 38. Um, this is uh, the same concept as th uh, pound 38. All right. Um, I should close this as a duplicate. Hmm, not yet. Not yet. Um, but let's create a new issue here. Um, menu bar UI cleanup. Um, we need to fix the menu bar. Um, search should be converted to a text box. Um, and alignment of items in uh, mobile view. And um, new article should be aligned right in desktop view. Yeah, there we go. And I'm going to mark this as, it's a bug. I'm going to mark it as help wanted and a good first issue for folks that may want to contribute by helping with a little bit of CSS and a little bit of markup. So, um, all right, there's core wiki up top there. Smab up at the top with 14 commits. Pete's got five. Um, I forget how to pronounce your name with two. Evandro with two. But on the month, Smab's got 14. There you go. Wintermute's got two on the month. But all time, Smab's way in the lead. Very cool. And Dev Lead still has four there. Nav bars and bootstrap are an art. You really need to understand how the items flow. Amen. Amen. So thank you so much to everybody for contributing to Core Wiki here. Um, I really feel like this project is, is coming along. And I think the last issue that I really want to address before, before I, I publish the website... Um, I think is going to be this one. What is this? Pull request section enhancement. Should the pull re request include a step to rebase their branch prior? Yeah, I think we can take care of this in a bit, but I want to write some more code here today. I want to get back over to stream tools. Um, and if, if you aren't familiar with our work on this project, um, this is this is a project that runs some of the widgets that you see here in the video, um, including the followers count all the way up there in the top corner above the, the chat room, um, the followers count, the viewer count, and of course the, the GitHub ticker, scoreboard ticker up there up at the top. Those are, those are all ASP.NET Core uh, web pages that are being generated from within this project, and we've embedded them inside of OBS so that folks can can see those updates and it's easy for us to build and manage these these um, these widgets these components so we've got a pull request here i wanted to take a look at from patrick uh, added a how to how to contribute section to the readme file i know that a simple manual is obvious but i think tips on how to start can help begin your beginners join our community 
So let's take a look at the change here. So it's it, this is really a documentation change. Um, this application was built with ASP.NET Core 2.0. It can be built on Mac, Linux, and Windows. Download the .NET SDK, grab a copy of Visual Studio Code to get started on any platform. How to contribute. Open a new issue or find some interesting. Fork the repository. Create a new branch in your fork from dev. Okay. Code something awesome. Yes. Uh, create a pull request from your branch to our dev branch. In the pull request, write what you did and why, if it requires an explanation. Answer questions or correct your code if needed. Celebrate that you are a new contributor. Nice. And uh, configuration, Google Fonts API. Um, you know what? I'll take it. Thank you, Patrick. I'll take it. Uh, thank you for helping to encourage more folks and make it easier for them to join us in working on this project. Cool. All right. And uh, that should bump Patrick up on the scoreboard. See, now I've got to go and refresh it again. And that just feels weird. Right? And actually... Yep, it did fetch the data from it. There it is. So Patrick's the only one this week who merged, who had something that we merged into dev. All right. Um, let's go over to our code. And the project that I'm working on right now is on the GitHub scoreboard. Uh, not this one. Down here, I think. Optional scrolling, signal or updating. This is the piece that I'm doing right now, is this part right here. So, um, signal R, if, if you're not familiar with it, is the ASP.NET library mm, framework that's used to, um, to give you a WebSocket connection back and forth with your clients that are connected. It's a two-way connection, so you can, you can, from the server, push data push commands down to um, clients that are connected. So in this case, for that scoreboard that you see up at the top, the score ticker, I'm going to monitor GitHub, and when there's a change, right, when we get an update, I want to push that update down into the scoreboard and have it show, you know, score updating, and push through there. Oh, thank you, Rickety Rocket. I, I appreciate the, the change there. Uh, no, and it, and uh, <laughs> not scared, but uh, just keeping an eye on things. That's all. So I I appreciate that. So let's take a look. We were we we're really close to having this scoreboard update. I think we're we're actually just working on the client side features now to actually push that update in. So I'm going to switch over to my my uh, disturbed. <laughs> yes. U Utah Tio. Uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for the follow, Utah, and uh, look forward to seeing you in the chat room there. Uh, let me just do a quick get status, see what branch I'm on. All right, so I'm on my scoreboard branch. So... Once I finish this little bit of merging here, this this feature, we'll merge it up into dev and we'll see some new folks get picked up on our scoreboard. Um, so let's close this over here. So this is the Stream Hub JS. And if you remember, if you remember our friend I know. I know Walter White. I, I am. Our friend Rachel Appel suggested that we name our SignalR hub to manage the GitHub interaction. GitHubby McGitHub face. And that's what I'm going to use. And that's what we're going to call it. So... I have this, this is the hub, this is what's going to send down 
when it receives an, an updated indication from our GitHub service that's out there monitoring GitHub, once a minute it'll reach out and say, hey, were there any updates? And it's not even, all it's doing is getting the last update date. And um, if there is, I'll trigger the updated method down here, right? And this is going to use some some C sharp class that we're going to create called the GitHub client. I think we may have actually created it. And we're going to call a method on that called update GitHub. And it will send out this notification to our web pages, to our connected clients, and tell them, here's the new contributor information. Go repaint your user interfaces. So if I if I use F12 here, you see there's no definition found for this. I don't have a GitHub client either. I thought there was one here. No, it can't find it. Are you kidding me? There is one. Ha! Um, Mick, GitHub context. It's a thing. Um, we're going to reach out to all the clients that are in the GitHub group. So when clients connect to our to our hub, if you think of if you think of a signal or hub like an IRC chat room or right, um, you have groups and you have individual folks there. Um, oh, there you go, Rickety Rocket. Yes, it's um, it it does very well. There's see the little flame here. This is OmniSharp running in the background, and um, actually, it looks like I've got some some version issues here. I'm going to need to update. We'll fix that. Um, but um, to finish my thinking about the hub, um, and I'll answer that question, Rocket, in just a second. The hub, if you think of like an IRC chat room, you have groups. Those groups are like chat rooms, right? It's a collection of people that are all connected for some reason, right? We've put them into the same group. They're in the same room. I can target that group of folks by using that string name of that group, and I can send a command down. And those commands that are client-side, I don't have definition for them on the server. So this is actually just a string, and it's going to look for that method name on the client, and it's going to pass the contributors collection as the data for it. No problem, Rocket. Here, so let's add, let's answer your question. Why can't it find it? So when I click through and looked at um, OmniSharp here, you can see I've got it. It's a little bit confused because I'm using two different versions of the .NET Core framework. So we can we can resolve this pretty easily. Um, I want to thank Gabe Imperio. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you joining us here. Um, so let's let's clean up this. So we've got everything on the 2.1 version, and this should actually be should actually be pretty quick to do here. So before I go too much further, let's get over to let's look for some CS proj files. So the test CS proj 2.1. Yeah. All right. So this should be on the 2.1 project. Um, let's give it a quick, uh, what folder am I in? It just says stream tools. Yeah. All right. So if I do a .NET build, it should, you stink. You stink, you turkey. Um, I want to .NET build Fritz stream tools SLN. And we should get it restoring and running everything properly with the 2.1 features. Uh, you can define the SDK version in a global JSON. So let's go into global JSON. I'm probably forcing it to use an, the older version here. There it is. So global JSON, there we go, is referencing the RC version. I can change that try building again. So it's attempting to use the RTM version, right? This was the version that was just released this week. Make sure that everything builds properly. 
So I have a Twitch DLL that manages the network connection to Twitch. My chatbot DLL contains all the commands and things that the chatbot in the cl in the the bot in the chat room knows how to do. And uh, that looks like it built successfully. Good. So let's close out of this. Um, we're going to be working in here a little bit. I, we don't need to be over there. I don't think I need that anymore. Now if I go to here and F12, no, it's not going to find it. Um, let's reload the window. Sometimes it, it needs a little kick just to get that connection. And because I changed projects. And uh, F12, and it's not finding it. Hmm. Interesting. All right. I'm not... Uh, yeah, what are, you, what are you talking about here? What are you talking about? Sure looks like it loaded properly. Yeah, there it is. Now it says Fritz Stream Tools SLN. Yeah. There it goes. All right. Just so everyone knows, 2.1300 is available as a host in Azure Apps Now. Yes. Um, that was something they they really wanted to make sure was that they released on Azure App Service, uh, .NET Core, and made sure it was available with, with the application. With the application framework when it was published. So. All right. So... Mimicking what we did for the followers information that you see at the top, and you can see those update live as we're going along here. I'm going to take StreamHub here, StreamHub JS, and uh, I'm going to copy copy this. I'm going to duplicate it. No! Oh, crap. Where did it go? I didn't want to do that. Oh, crap. Crap, crap. This is why we have source control. Um, get status. All right, now how do I undelete a file? I think I can just reset that file. No, unknown revision or path not in the working tree. No, no, no. I need to put dash dash. Did it come back? It did not come back. Oh no! Cannot do hard reset with paths. You stink. Only half day after the announcement. Yeah. I know. It should have come earlier if you ask me. Let's add global JSON and then reset. Um, set SDK to 2.1.300. All right, now I should be able to do a git reset hard and have it restore. There it is. All right, copy. And paste, and I should get, yep, a new one. I will rename this one from StreamHub. To make GitHub bub. It works. Do you use command line git on Windows or something else? I'm old school. I like the command line. I'm a big fan of the command line for working. Um, for working with uh, uh, working with Git, um, it's it's the it's the platform that the Git folks develop for. So I I think it's pure to to coin a phrase, to turn a phrase. So this is Mick GitHub bub because why not? Uh, did you just lose the commit of global JSON when I reset hard? Nope. Nope. It's right there. Um, all right. So our URL, where are we actually listening? Is um, right 
it is defined inside of startup. So we configure, we map the hub, githubby, make github phase. Oh, Rachel. Come on. Okay, okay, Shia LaBeouf. I'm going to put this here, that over there. All right. So we'll connect to this URL where our GitHub hub is listening. CLI is nice because you can use the keyboard to do everything and it's easily automated. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Um, I'd like to thank, oh, for introducing you to Posh Git in PowerShell. Yes. Um, so in PowerShell, which is available on Mac and Linux as well, um, there's a there's a plugin called Posh Git that has tab completion and a whole bunch of features to make Git navigation just amazing. McNerdius. Uh, thank you for subscribing, McNerdius. McWonderful McHub stuff. Yes. My my mother's Irish side is shining through. <laughs> All right. Um, and this is going to get crazy to remember with all the when it when am i using mic github and when am i not um but it's just github here all right so so when we start our connection from our javascript we're going to connect to that url um and then we've got some nice code that was previously written that knows how to check to make sure if we get disconnected try to reconnect and then here these these statements this hub on right the this is where we're defining the um the callback right this is the callback that um the name of the method that we're going to trigger on github updated on the client side so i'm going to copy that with the command c I'm going to get rid of this extra one because I only have one method in this one. And I'll paste it in there. And this is nice that it's got a, a little deal here with the, um, with the debugging, right? Let's debug out information about what actually came in. And I'm not receiving, I'm only receiving one argument coming down. And it is the collection of contributors. So I'm going to change this to contributors. And this on, and let's say, let's call it on updated. And we will pass back the contributors. Okay. So now this knows how to connect and listen for the message from SignalR. We need to reference that inside of our page. So down here at the bottom, below all of our formatting, right? So there's our jQuery. Here's to do the jQuery marquee. Here's the configuration of the marquee. Done. But not really done, right? Um, I'm going to add the references to our SignalR scripts here. And just so we remember, the followers count has the same functionality. And here's how we used what was built over there. So I will grab this exact same capability. We'll grab the SignalR client. This is a standard client that's delivered using NPM. And I'll come in here to my scroll user interface and I'll paste those two in. Let's move those back slightly. Um, and instead of stream hub, of course, this is now mit, mit git hub bub.js. Oh, Rachel. All right. Um, that's not where I want to be. The next piece was to actually configure the uh, stream hub. So I will grab this little bit of functionality and we'll actually write the code now to receive this information. So it's not a new stream hub, it's a new Mick GitHub bub. Try the new Mick GitHub bub at your local McDonald's. Ba 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 ba. I'm loving it.
to make git git hubby git hub face joke is the joke that keeps on giving on my live coding stream there we go all right um Uh, da, 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 da. Did I forget to update the name of the the title on the stream? I think I did. All right. Um, this is great. Oh, glad I'm I'm glad you're enjoying it. My Midnight Tangent Ryan. Um, all right. So with that change, we now it's not on followers, right? That's not the name of the method that we're triggering from here. It's on GitHub updated, which is where to go right there. And it's now calling this on updated. So I will make that method here. And this is going to receive contributors. Now, it's not going to be as simple as just doing that. I have a feeling we're going to need to build some templates here because each one of these is... It's pretty complex. Right? I might be able to reach in and and push content into each one of these. But uh, I think it's going to be a little bit more complicated. Um, all right. Let's... I'm going to comment this out. What I'd like to do is I'd like to... Mm -hmm. How do I test this? There's there's our next question. I am, I am Radum. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Look forward to seeing you in our chat room. Um, all right. How do I test this, right? How do I, how do I force the GitHub update? Right, because I'm going to want to open a browser and I'm going to want to push updates down into this. Well, um, GitHub client has this update GitHub method with contributors. Please fix the first couple of wrong unused lines in git mic github bub js. Uh oh, which ones? Oh, these ones up here. Good call. Let's get rid of this and that. Yeah. We're good. Um, actually, we need to have um, this needs to be rats. Uh, Domarty Nov, thank you for the follow. This needs to be no. Hang on, copy this. We're going to steal that. There we go. All right. Th thanks for picking that up, Jovan. Um, all right, so, and um, it does look weird, make GitHub bub JS. And I promise we'll clean that up and make it something normal later. Um, all right, this is count. I don't think I need that anymore. So I think the way that we can kind of force the issue and get this to actually do something is I think we can do something to force update GitHub directly. You know what I mean? Um, let's... Let's see. I think, don't we have a GitHub controller up here? So let's do this. I think... No, we're not receiving the client. <laughs> it's an unknown... A, some JavaScript client framework named it already. Really? Make GitHub bub. It's out there. You better be loving it. Um, maybe? Uh... What 
happened over here. All right. Um, let's let's do this. Let's receive a GitHub client into this. And let's stash a copy of it. And I'll use command period here to generate a read-only property down there. Um, Cabal's Bar, thank you for the follow. Look forward to seeing you in the chat room. And Steve, you've been busy. You're, you've been very busy, Steve. More than 2,200 followers. Wow. Wow. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um... Even if you're tuned in for a little, if you're tuned in for a lot, I, I appreciate everybody hanging out and offering your insight in the chat room, asking questions. No question is a bad question. I, I encourage all questions here, you know. Nobody's going to tell you that's a stupid question. People will tell you that I gave you a stupid answer. We'll work on that. We'll, we'll, we'll make it better, okay? I, I promise. No, I didn't blow it. 61 people on Twitch want to make rib now. Amen, Chaos Theory. I like it. Um, all right. I want to create a little test method here. Public I action result test. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Enjoyed a session you had at Egg Night 2017. Glad to have a chance to see your work in action. Oh, thanks, Cabal's Bar. Um, I, th I I'm, I'm trying to remember. I did a uh, web development, web uh, Visual Studio for web developers session there at Ignite 2017. Really enjoyed giving that session. That was a lot of fun. Um, let's um, let's let's give it default value here. Uh, let's just call it value. Something we can pass in on the connection string, and we'll just force all the values to that. And let's uh, um, string um, um, name, no, dev name, string project name. And I'll push that information in to my, uh, into GitHub and get it to force update away from whatever GitHub says is actually out there. Um, so let's do this. So uh, let's call this test contributors. And this is, this will be a new, with a um, new, what was it, GitHub contributor. Let's, this is a little bit more complicated, so I'm going to get my indents lined up here so that it makes sense. All right. Um, what do I have? What do I have? Right, GitHub contributor has an author with commits. No, it was not GitHub contributor. What does the client take? GitHub information. Uh, okay. All right, so this needs to be GitHub information. Uh, let's call this test info. Okay. So now a GitHub information. Ugh. There's all my snippets. I don't want snippets. Repository equals the project name that was passed in, right? Where is uh, GitHub information? All right, so I have the name of the repository, and then I can pass the top weeks contributors, the top months contributors, the top ever contributors. So let's put in just a list with the one person in the top week contributor. Wrong button. Sorry about that. Okay, so top week contributors equals a new list of GitHub contributors and new, it should be a new GitHub contributor. Ugh. Right, and then it's author and the author I'm gonna make dev name commits equals value. Now, why doesn't it like that? Can not be used in the, because the setter is inaccessible. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. 
You want to be that way? Be that way. Need a semi... Well, wait a sec. This wraps that one. This wraps that... Yeah. There we go. Let's get these lined up. All right, now that makes more sense, right? And I love having these tab guides here, these vertical tab guides, so that I know when I've started and stopped an object, right? It becomes clearer to my eyes exactly what's going on there. All right, and I'm seeing some new folks just stopping by, popping into the chat room. Not actually, you know, kind of lurking. That's okay. Welcome. I appreciate you stopping by and checking in. All that get set stuff, just use fields, yes. I kind of agree with that. Uh, developer Desmond, hey there, Developer Desmond, welcome. Howdy, howdy, where are you from? Howdy, that sounds sounds like you're either American or Canadian, definitely North American. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say test info, the zero with item, because I know there's only one. Um, and there's uh, the top weak contributors. I will add one, and this will be a new GitHub contributor. All right, and it's going to be author equals dev name, and commits equals that value. Now, I should be able to say, uh, New England, but I think howdy y'all are just too great to pass up. <laughs> All right, uh, I, I, I think you got something there. Um, hmm, the GitHub client—it's receiving the Octokit one, right? That's the one from our GitHub library, and not this one. So I've run into an issue here where it's kind of confused. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a using statement here to redirect and redirect that namespace and make it very clear exactly what we're using here. And this should now be services GitHub client. So if I go back to test, I can now say client dot, there we go, update GitHub with my collection of contributors, which is now test info. And let's just return test info just so we can see what it looks like. Um, let's return that as a JSON. Okay. So now I have a test method here inside of my controller. This is really to do that integration test to make sure that it's notifying and coming all the way around on my JavaScript and is going to, going to paint the screen at least raise the event properly for me here. So let's go down into Fritz Stream Tools and let's .NET run this. We'll open it in a browser and we'll try testing and seeing if we can get this to send the information down to the client and then we'll figure out how to repaint our marquee. Excuse me. Hello there, .NET run. Thank you. And I start to sound like Walter White when I do that, that, and, and I do the vocal fry on it. I'm not doing the uh, uh, Liam Neeson like I was the other day, speaking with the Irish accent. It's a terrible Irish accent. Hello there, Pac-Man Jr. Good to see you this morning. For some reason, this isn't, this is taking its good old time starting here. Why is that? They're going to anger me. 2.1 is going to be faster. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, uh, not there. Uh, oh, look, now, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I see how this works. Psh. Hosted service. Sequence contains no elements. Link innumerable. Uh, get last commit timestamp. All right. 
All right, that's something we're going to need to fix. So let's go back and look at this. So I have a method inside the GitHub service called get last commit timestamp. Um, and it's right here on line 115. Um, and what this is supposed to do is it's supposed to go into the client, into the repositories, and get the last update on those repositories and return them. But I see it having a problem here. Let's do this. Do I have logger here? I do. Logger, log information. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, getting GitHub last update information for, and I should make that a dollar up front here, take advantage of string interpolation. And uh, this is going to be that R, so I know what it's looking at. Um, and let's let's see what it's doing here. Try this one more time. Hello, Jeff. Brazil is here. Oh, good to see you, Nic Nicholas. I'm getting silly. I am. I'm sorry. I'm getting punchy. Is today the last day of Max? I sort of enjoyed code. Um, yeah, I think so. I think this will be the last day that we're doing, that we're outright, right, explicitly doing uh, doing some work on the Mac here. Now, here, look at this. There's something blocking here. Um, hmm. I'm going to be glad to be back to a larger screen for your coding window. Oh, oh. Sorry. Um, it's it's not even logging this bit here, right? Hmm. But we can continue using Visual Studio Code. Nothing's going to prevent us from using that on Windows. Uh, let's see here. Why? 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 Why are we just kind of hanging? What's it hanging on? Right. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, here. We're way up here. Okay. Get last commit on line 115 where it's doing the max. Monitor updates on line 43. Let's take a look at that. That doesn't make sense. Hmm. Huh. Perf, don't use message for logging. We'll allocate a string on the heap even when logging is turned off. Uh, don't use the dollar quotes. Okay. I get it. Um, let's... Alright, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, where was I? Not there. Not there. Um, no, it was in the service. Wrong one. Um, <laughs> that one. Oh, wow, I can't pronounce that. Uh, welcome, KGF. KJF. Oh, yeah, the music's playing. Oh, my gosh, it's it's muted for some reason. How did that get muted? You're not even hearing Steve. There, can you hear that now? Oh. Oh.
That's terrible. Um, all right. Gosh. Um, all right, let's let's figure out why that's kind of So monitor updates is coming in here. Is cancellation requested? Task delay, get last commit timestamp is where it is down here. Configuration repository CSV. So it should have that information. It's an information. When I'm into production, it won't actually do this. Um, but you can now. Oh, man. Getting less commit time stamp. Four. And let's just put the whole thing right there. Let's see what it's... Uh, make sure it's actually passing that. Timestamp is spelled wrong. Ah, eh, that's okay. It's a log information. We'll fix it. We'll fix it. I know I did it again. I'm okay with that. Um, yeah. I'm wondering... It's in the service, so when the service starts, we're doing an await task delay on monitor updates when it starts. We're returning the task run. I don't want to await it. I want to just let it run. There's where I'm blocking. I don't want to block like that. I don't want to wait for it. Just let it run in the background. Do its thing. Good. I'm glad you crashed. Tell me where. Tell me why. Unable to start Kestrel. Failed to bind to 5000 addresses already in use. What? What? Addresses already in use. Shouldn't be. Let's close that. Get a fresh terminal here. I mean, 5,000 shouldn't be in use. Yeah, nothing there. No, it's... um. I'm not concerned about the performance right now. To me, that's a micro-optimization of performance. It's for the usability for me as a developer, um, I'd rather use this first. Um, and I, I don't really need to do that format either. That feels wrong. Right, if I just say return monitor updates, right, it'll return immediately. Yeah. <laughs> let it build, let it run. Come on. There we go. All right. Yeah, this is going to say Kestrel's running already. Yeah. There it is. It's it's still running, even though it's failing. Which, that's weird too. Right? If it's failing, fail. Little perf aware is always a good thing because of GC. I mean, a good example for people learning. Set a good example for people learning. Um... I'm I'm not there's 
I think there's other problems that we can address first before being concerned about how many, how many strings are being allocated. I think there are bigger performance issues that people have before addressing that. Like they've got some unintended blocking in their new service that they added into the mix. I don't think I need to make this async either. Because I'm, I'm blocking now. Right, let's get rid of that. Um, no, no, I do want the await there. Cause I, all right, I do want that one blocked. Do want it blocking. Yes. Okay. So this is, where is it crashing out here? Stream tools models GitHub repository zero. Getting last commit timestamp for C sharp Fritz stream tools, C sharp Fritz core wiki. Getting GitHub last update information for stream tools. Okay. Sequence contains no elements on the max statement. So, first thing I'm seeing is. It's blocking on this, even though I'm not awaiting it. So let's get that. Move it down there. Um, if last update is less than that, wait. Yeah. This last update starts off, I initialize it to minimum date time. So this should be if that's greater than or equal to. And let me move this down. Um, nah, get the recent contributors now, immediately. Yeah, I'm okay with that. But that should be greater than or equal to. Right, so it's more recent than minimum date. Um, all right. Kill that. Try this again. All right, so it loaded up really quick, which has me worried that it ran too quickly. Sequence contains no elements. It didn't get any dates, even though, so here's what I'm doing, right? It, that's down in get last commit timestamp. So it did that, it did this, Client repository get user team, username repository name updated at as a date time. Let's do a little refactoring here. Um, I know I'm allocating here. Nope, need to put a parenthesis around that. Oh, wait. Good. Now. Now, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's break this up and grab... Update info dot, where was it? Updated at. Uh, 
like that. Now what I should be able to do um, is say, and I'm, I'm going to use it again here, um, and yeah, all right. Um, Um, last updated at, and this is going to be update info dot updated at. All right. Now we should see what it's fetching at this point. Message is not visible to users in your region due to GDPR. <laughs> well played there, viewer eighty nine. Okay. What did we log? Last updated at 5.31, 3.14. So, yeah, all right. So if we take that and put dot .utc date time on that, right? I should still get something coming back as that date time. Can you debug and break in the function in VS Code on that Mac thing? I can. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Let's see what the error is. So the last updated at UTC-wise, that looks good. Getting it for CoreWiki, that looks good. So, yeah, right? Like, why is it telling me that there's nothing in, when I say last updates, max? So here's what I'm going to do. I will put a breakpoint there. And I can run the debugger. Debugger. Let's see what it says. Let's see what's in last updates when I get there. Come on. On that Mac thing. Yes, yes. You need my password. Is it not getting into the loop on that call? No, it's it's in the loop. I'm seeing these messages here. Here we go. So last updates is nothing. So even though I've called last updates dot append, it's not actually putting it onto my array. Punk. Fine. I'll show you. And now I'll try and debug with that Mac thing. It can be done exactly how I want it. Well, that's what Joe Bun said to do. The only question is, yeah? are you the man to do it? I just did. All right, here we go. It didn't hit here. There it goes. Last updates. Yeah, now I've got dates. I've been watching for a bit. I missed the intro. Can you re-give the context of what's going on? Sure, developer Desmond. Um, what's going on... Well, I may have a wrong button. What's the step in here on the Mac? Debug. Uh, one second. Yeah, step in, F11. That's not right. Okay, so if last update, right, so if I F10, if last update, yeah, come on, show me what last update is. It's right there. 531, 514, if that's greater than, ah, no, I did have it right the first time. Nuts. That, that's, one second, here we go. So what we're doing is, function F10, how are you allowed to append to a static array? 
It's not, it wasn't... I don't know. It let me do it, and that should have thrown an error. Um, Alright, so... What we're doing here, you see the, sc the scroller up at the top? We're building that scroller, and we're writing a little bit of update functionality so that it'll load automatically for us. So let's try this one more time. Is it fun function F10 or alt F10? This just says F10. <laughs> All right, there we go. So now it's got the last update date for for my GitHub uh, repositories. So now, if I go over to the project, right? Where to? Um, it's going to show me, it's not showing it actually running here. Is it under output? No. All right. Let's go back over to Firefox. Let's reload the page. We should be able to get to that scroll bar, that GitHub scroller up there here at GitHub contributors information. Unable to resolve service for type. Oh no, I'm missing something. Um, for GitHub client. Ah, I didn't add the GitHub client. I should have gotten that error somewhere else. Uh, let's stop this. Yeah. All right. Um, services GitHub client. It should be registered over in my startup services. And let's see. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Register GitHub services. Um, you're right. I didn't create the GitHub client here yet. Okay. That's easy. Services, add, and I think it can be a transient. Um, GitHub client. Uh, services GitHub client. Yeah. Append returns a new array. Ah, that's what I was doing wrong. That's what I was doing wrong. Well, let me go back over to the repository because I know that list is a larger object. Last updates equals last updates append. Cannot convert I enumerable system date time to system date time. What? Punk. All right. Append is a link thing. Yeah, there we go. All right. So now, um, where was I? So that should be allocated now. Now I should be able to, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Build it, run it. Yep, append is one of those link extension methods. So if I refresh here, um, why don't we see it? Mm-hmm. 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 There we go. All right. So now I've got the same ticker that's appearing up at the top. Now, I should be able 
to force it to load new information. Right? By this time going to, where was it, GitHub controller? Uh, what was the name of our method? Nope, not there, not there. Not there either. Here it is. Test with a value, dev name, and project name. So I actually want to put these kind of side by side. And this is where I think the... This is where I think the Mac kind of falls on its face with some of its... Um, some of its window management. Right? Now I'm kind of... Where am I? So let's open this page. Holy crow, already exceeded the API rate limit. Well, that's a problem. Hmm. All right. I'm going too fast. Let's go back to GitHub service. Instead of delaying, right, this is 60 seconds. Let's delay, um, let's make it every five minutes. But here's the thing, right, to get that recent contributors count, it's hitting it twice. Invite Ben Adams as a guest. Oh, Ben's, Ben's helped us a little bit. Um... And this get recent contributors. Yeah, that should only fire now once every... Once every five minutes. I'm still going to hit that rate limit, though. As soon as I load. Let's see. Maybe we can catch that. Yeah, the get recent contributors, we sh... Um... Let's change this to have an absolute expiration. Add minutes. Let's have this expire every five minutes. Um, yeah. And I do want to have it handle, right? Where did it error out? Where did it error out? Mm -hmm. Get recent contributors. In the repository object. All right. So in here. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to need to put a try around this. This, I think we can move up above our loop. But let's put a try around this fetch. Now, the exception it threw was a rate limit exceeded exception. Return empty collection. So we will just return out model just to let it, just to ensure that it uh, returns something. All right, um, ah, come on. This is returning a repository. So let's get rid of this and let's 
explicitly declare up here, repository, repository. And the other one is get contributors returns. I read only list contributor, fine. And we can get rid of that. So now it'll fetch that and we should see. VS needs a refactor function to move variables up in scope. Yes, Visual Studio Code does. All right, come on. So that should be reloading for us. Okay, so nothing's coming back because I, I got the error. Um, but I should be able to now go to... Sla um, oop, need the 5001. GitHub slash test value equals 5. Dev name equals Jeff. And uh, was it project name? Equals uh, live stream. Okay. So it built the thing. What did it do over here? Nothing on the console. Hmm. So it, it clearly built the thing and returned. This is the repository, this is the author, this is the commits. I'm not seeing the debugging information now come out on this page. Right, because, oh, let's go back to make GitHub bub. Debug equals true if this debug console debug okay github on github updated console debug so I should have seen this happen as well um, oh you know what I didn't start the hub no no uh, yes I need to call start Right? Yep, with the names of the groups. And the groups that I want is GitHub. It built the thing with the stuff. Yes. So let's refresh that. Connection closed with an error. I'm okay with that. We need to figure out what the error is. But it's it's clearly right, Signal R is doing its thing, it's connecting. Um right, I mean GitHub groups equals GitHub. So um GitHub make github face all right so on did i i created a base hub here let's do that request query group singular default for each groups add to group async so am i getting this i'm not hitting there okay Um, we're not hitting that. We should be somewhere down in one of these. Um, let's, yeah, that's what I'm thinking is, did we 
is the map hub set up correctly. Configure map hub to slash github. Slash github. Okay. Hmm. Is the hub in the DI? No, we don't have to put the hub in DI. Follower hub is not part of DI. That was something that was something that um, David Fowler pointed out was you don't need to do that. Right, I had that. Right, it's that's not in DI now. Add SignalR, add JSON protocol. It's there. Hmm. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, we're going to need to look at the debug log. But it's not it's not actually showing me. Yeah. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop the debugger. .NET run again so we can see what's going on in the console log. All right. Well, hang on. Yeah, rate limit exception exceeded. That's okay. Shouldn't have hit that twice. It should have hit it once and stopped. All right. Um, let's refresh this page. I'm not getting it disconnecting. All right. So now I'll try this. on GitHub updated. There it is. It fired. Cool. All right. So now we have our collection of contributor objects. And there's our contributors for each one of the repositories. Fantastic. All right. I can do this. This is easy now. Now we can spin through that and actually format it and put it back on the on the marquee. That should be easy to do, right? I'm looking at the time and it is 12:20. So we're about two and a half hours in and I think do I have when's my first meeting today? I have a meeting in about a half an hour, coincidentally talking about a workshop that we're going to be scheduling here on stream. Um, I'm going to need to, just a quick note, I'm going to need to push back the, what was going to be our June workshop on Azure. Um, I've got a little bit of travel coming up in June and some of the folks that I wanted to be able to help with it, they're going to be traveling as well when I'm not traveling. So. We're, we're not able to connect up on that. So the next workshop will be in July, and that's going to be our architecture workshop. And I can tell you, just to kind of wet your whistle about the architecture workshop, because I know some folks were uh, interested in it. And then we'll go back to formatting this HTML for a little bit. 
um, the planning, um, I reached out to some of our friends. Jimmy Bogard is interested in helping us with Mediator. Steve Smith, I need to confirm if he's available. We're going to plan for July 13. And Miguel Castro. So everybody that's been helping with CoreWiki, you may like this. Miguel Castro has, has expressed an interest in giving a little bit of uh, one of his talks that he does around application extensibility. And uh, he's taking a look at CoreWiki to see how he can build some extensible APIs onto that and show you how to architect your application for extensibility so you can add features later without impacting application design. So Miguel's going to join us for the architecture workshop and talk about that. That'll be a lot of fun. If you're familiar with Miguel, if you've seen him give presentations, he's got a, a tremendous um, collection of courses at Pluralsight. I encourage you to check his courses at Pluralsight. Drop him a line. Let him know that, that you heard that he's going to be coming on stream with me here. And uh, let him know you're interested. You know, he's, he's a tremendous resource for our technical community. Really knows software architecture. Flying Pizza, Mediator Rocks. I use it all the time. Fantastic. Um, I've spent a little bit of time with Mediator, but I thought it'd be fun to bring Jimmy on to talk about it with us here on stream. So we will take a look at that with Jimmy. All right, let's see if we can put something together to do this format. Now that we're over here, we're in this JavaScript. Now we can reformat all the data coming through. Signal R rocks. I agree, Janescu. So we've got the data coming through, and I need to rebuild this, this template for the new data that came through. But here's the thing, right? This is being generated server side. And I need kind of like a client side template that I can reference and build out. Um, so what I'm tempted to do is to put one of these in like a hidden element that I can clone, populate, and swap out with what's in the marquee element. How do, some of you, some of the my HTML expertise friends there in the chat room. What do you think? Does that sound like a good strategy to copy this template? In right to I mean here I'll just start doing this. D uh, do it with a data dash, a data dash. That's and and re replace the same things. Well, I'm gonna I'm going I may have different number no I'll have the same number of repo repositories that, um, if I did a data dash I hmm, hmm. let me look at the contributor ticker segment let's let's look at this so we can get that in front of us as well here so this is just author and the number of commits with a, on a for each uh, that's not too bad or a tag helper a, a tag helper on the is on the server side right I'm gonna need to do this on the client side I mean I could render uh, I don't want to render it server side I've already got the data on the client um Yeah. Right, so what I'm thinking is let's grab this. Uh, div style equals display none. No! That's not what I copied. <laughs> you punk. And it's not. Uh, data stuff equals some JSON. Um, I see where that's going. Uh, data ID equals uh, repository name. Let's call this um, project template, right? If I did something like that and show it, yeah. 
Um, so top of the week, top week. So I'm going to get rid of this. Top of the month. And top all time. All right, now I'm always gonna have top all time, but top of the month I might not always have, and I'm gonna run into that issue like I have taking care of for the week here. I should probably fix that while I'm down here as well. So at if repo dot top month. Yeah, top month contributors and I, I dot count equals zero. Uh, no contrib eaters this month. All right, else, there we go. Okay, come on, Jeff, just use Blazor. <laughs> use Knockout or Equivalent. That's what I, that was another thing that I was thinking. Um, but I think we're okay just doing a quick find and replace here on these. So what I'll do, uh, can I split the window? Can I split the window? I'd like to split the window. Ugh. Fine. What I'll do is I'll grab the first shot. Nah, I'll grab the children of project template and clone it. Next to search, top right. Yeah, but it splits it vertically. I want to split it horizontally. Right, there's a way to change it to split, uh, right? Is it like alt that, command that? Uh, I've, I've gone too far. Yeah. Or via the view, you can split. Split editor. Toggle editor group layout, yes. Ah, there we go. That's what I wanted. Thank you. All right. So now down here... Um, so I need a four over each... I need a four over each one of the elements inside of contributors. So it's going to be con uh, the object I've received dot contributors and a four over that. All right, so f is, uh, four each, right? I can do a four each in Java. Um, var, and this is going to be a, a repository, let's call it repository information. Is it in contributors dot contributors, right? And that'll get me into this array. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. So var, um, uh, uh, let's call it new node equals new nodes equals um, document get element by ID and I'm going to get project template dot children child uh, clone node dot child nodes and then I should be able to iterate over these right because each one of these is going to be one of these items the repository name top week top month top all time 
and then jam them onto my my existing uh, marquee, right? So new nodes. Uh, right, zero. Uh, it, it's going to be like text value. Text content equals, this is the repository name, and the repository name is going to be repository information dot repository. Yeah, right? Now I'm going to do a whole bunch of other stuff and I'll, I'll finish getting that all lined up. But I need to then jam it on the end of marquee. So let's say, right, other node configuration. And then we'll say, um, uh, document get element by I no, it's by class name marquee so there's only one so I should be okay with that and let's just say um, um why did I do that as a class? That feels wrong. Let's do it like this. Right? And I think but I think I have yeah. Alright. Let's change this into an ID. Because there is only one of these. Okay. Now I can say get element by ID. Append child. And let's just say new nodes zero. And it should jam that onto the end of it when it receives that information. And we should see it start to appear going across there. So if I refresh that so that I get my new JavaScript. Expected expression got the keyword var. Really? Where? Is it talking about there? Yeah. Are you kidding? What am I doing wrong with a JavaScript for each? No. Come on now. JavaScript for each in. Did I need to put a space in there? Are you kidding? Is that... Is that what I did wrong? Uh, console? Missing a paren after four. I don't know. Now, wait a sec. Wrong for each method. No, no, no. What am I doing wrong? Array dot for each. Use. Use it with the counter. Hmm? All right, fine. Right? 
right? That's my collection coming back. So now... We're going to say var repository information equals contributors dot contributors i. Show me what I'm wrong with there. There we go. Now the socket and all that's connected, but it didn't paint anything on the screen. All right, let's reload that. Contributors, contributors is undefined. Let's put a breakpoint in there. Let's see exactly why, what we have when I receive that object. So I'll put a breakpoint right there. Retrigger it. Bang. Okay, so con contributors itself is. I have a typo. P I D. Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. Thank you. Um, but I've got an extra contributors here. I don't need. Refresh. There, now I get the marquee back. And if we force the information. So I've hit there. Did it add it on? I can't tell what it did. So there's marquee. Marquee wrapper. All right. Oh, wait a sec. Yeah. All right, jQuery's added all this stuff. Now, um, what did it actually copy? Thanks for picking that up, Draconius. Good catch. Let's see what that is when we trigger this. So, new nodes. New nodes? All right. The uh, length is zero. Well, that feels bad. Let's take a look here. Um, document, get element by ID. Right, project template. So, document, get element by ID. Okay, it gave me nothing for that. I thought we had. Right, that should be there. Right, document get element by ID, project template is. Right, there it is. And it's telling me there's nothing there. You're kidding, right? I think it was JS Project Template. No. It's right there. I can get rid of that. Right, it's, I mean, why wouldn't it let me find that?
Hmm. I should not have... Let's grasp at straws here for a minute. Just make sure that it's not doing anything destructive to that. No. That's not returning anything. Alright. Are you kidding me? not finding that one either. Wow, why doesn't get element by ID work? Right? I mean There's also, right, query selector That's not finding anything. You're kidding me, right? Am I missing something? How did I lose document? Element machine broke. Have a nice day. Yeah, 472 node packages coming your way. There's an arrow. Click it. It doesn't do anything. No, nothing. There it is, div project template. No, this is Firefox. Won't uh, document. My JavaScript is not working. There. Firefox returns returns null. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the questions I hate, I hate when people do this on Stack Overflow. The question's already answered over here. Yeah. And it's marked as a duplicate. Yeah. The rest of the page has not rendered, and so the element is not in existence. Need to put JavaScript at the end of the body tag. I'm not. It, I'm outside of that. No. Right. I'm. Yeah. I'm down in here. Have you tried turning it off and turning it on again? I. I think that's my next place to go here. I'm going to copy that. Quit Firefox. Let's try Chrome. Nope, not Pandora. Of course it's not secure. Thank you, LastPass. Uh, proceed to it, localhost. I get it, LastPass. Go. Thank you. Stupid thing. All right. Uh, <clears throat> developer tools. Console. Document. Get element by ID. Project. Okay, now we've got 
got something. The zero width is the text. The first is repository name. All right. All right. So let's do this and that. One of these and some of that. Save. Okay. And let's force the method. And it was test value equals five and dev name equals Jeff and project name equals live stream. Cool. Cannot set property text content of undefined. All right, getting somewhere. Please wait two minutes. <laughs> Um, uh, all right, new nodes one. All right, so what the heck? Why is my mouse? There we go. And I've got a node list. You know what? I think I need to do that clone node true, don't I? Yeah, so I get the depth. All right. And, oops. Hey, hey, hey. All right. Now we're, we're starting to talk here. All right. Um, <laughs> So, here, um, oh, nice, I like what you're doing there. Uh, it, it's supposed to be God mode, I see. Welcome. Love the leet speak there. Um, if I take a look at the elements on this, right, so the marquee object, it's not actually in here that we need to put it, right? It actually needs to be inside of both of these JS marquee objects. Because that's what it's animating. Right? So let's put it into... Yeah, there's two of them. So we should be able to... It was J classes that dot JS marquee. All right, so let's say... document get elements by class name right it was like that yeah okay and let's put an ARR on the end of that so I know it's an array and let's let's make this stupid simple for right now And let's see if that works and if it starts animating it around the screen for us. Uh, uh, it's not here. Where'd it go? Okay, it's on the first one. Oh my gosh, look at how slow it is. Uh, I need to put it on the second one also. So I'll probably need to say clone node true so I get it over there also. All right, so under marquee, there's this. Nope, but only put it on the one. Hmm. Why would it only put it on the first one? 
and not on the second. You know what? I bet you it cop it automatically copies the stuff into the second one, but it's still dog slow. Um. <laughs> oh, you. Did, what's it writing out for the configured speed? Uh, Let's see here. 15 seconds to cross. That's going to take more than 15 seconds there, bud, bud, eh? Um, all right, but I, I see it moving stuff across the screen, right? Um, all right, so if I go back here, da, da, da. And let's just say... Console debug new nodes. Let's take a look at what's in that. It it didn't show me. Fifteen thousand seconds. No, I think it's measuring it for the size of the current array that's there. Um. Da, 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 da. Okay, hang on. Let's paste that in. So there are nine nodes. So the third one is top weak. And that's where I'm going to need to start putting more information. Hub name isn't anymore GitHub face. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. Um, all right, so we need to reach into, right, so the... So the week is um, new nodes three, right? And then we need to get its child nodes, which is text and then the U, which doesn't have any text in it. Right, that's where we're going to start to jam stuff in there. Uh, oh, no, uh, the U is the top week. Okay. And then I need to put after that. So I need to append to the child nodes. All right, all right, I got it, I got it. All right, so we're going to say var week contrib equals zero. Um, and this is going to be weak contrib is less than uh, repository inf information. Now it's actually it should not have logged what it received here. I saw one in browser, var hub name equals mcgithub. It might be there. Up there. Um, contributors. Yep, I know. All right. Um, and all right, so I want to reach the property top week contributors. So we're going to create some new nodes and we're going to append them to that uh, that three. Uh, 
new contrib equals I need to create the document dot create element and our our final right our folks that appear here it's just the text it's the author and the commits so I don't really have a tag name so I'm gonna leave it as empty no. Um, oh, make it a span. New contrib dot text content equals. Okay, and it's going to be author and then commits. Come on, I put a period in there. Okay, so now I have my new contrib element, and I need to append it, which is that third span. Four is commented out. Ooh. Thanks. All right. So it's going to be... Um, right, that's my new contributor, and I'm going to put it on new nodes three dot child... A pen child. There we go. New contrib. And I'm going to append new nodes. Three. Is MCGitHub and MCGitHub face the same? <laughs> they might be. Alright, let's try this. And reload that. So if I look in the marquee, there's the div, there's the JS marquee. Nope, I didn't I didn't get the extra element appended yet. Alright. Hmm. We're gonna need to do some digging here and see what's going on. But I am out of time. I have a meeting that I need to get to. So what I'm going to do real quick. Let's add. Started SignalR updating the mar key. And I've committed everything up to the source control repository. Of course, I will take all the content all of today's um, today's session and make this available out on YouTube a little bit later today. Thanks so much for joining me. I, I hope you're enjoying what we're doing here with SignalR to get that contributor's uh, scoreboard updated. So I'll be back tomorrow talking about F-sharp. We're going to start learning F-sharp together, all right? eating ice cream while watching this. I'm jealous now. I'm jealous, Janesco. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. There's a thing here. There we go. F-Sharp Fridays. Absolutely. <laughs>